Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office. We have a practical project to hit here today. You can see I've got my Atari ST all hooked up and I have a couple of TOS ROMs to bring it up to spec so that I can use a later standard, more standard GoTech with a 1.44 megabyte image on there. Just to show you, I can't really see how you can tell what version of the operating system it's got on there. Um, I don't remember this sort of flashy rainbow bit when I had an Atari ST, so it's probably a later version than the one I had. But I think I heard when you boot up the version 2 TOS ROM, it has some sort of memory check, and I'm pretty sure mine doesn't have that. So that's going to be my gauge. So without further ado, I'm going to put the camera into its holder and we'll start ripping into this bad boy. So first things first, of course, I think I need to turn it off and unplug all the peripherals here my jury rigged cable set waiting for adapters now fortunately for me my Atari ST I never really um, bothered sort of finishing it off or rather putting the screws in so this was kindly uh, donated to the cause to me and uh, I've, it's kind of a workhorse so I've got another one that sort of lives in a box that's quite clean and everything but this is this is the one I use I don't know this is my favorite so far and you can see it's got my sort of mods for the mouse and stuff to make my life a little bit easier just heard something rattling around inside it actually as I tipped it let's have a look see look see what's rattling around hmm I'm gonna locate something while uh, while we're here. Ooh, oh no, it's all metal shieldings. So what I'm going to do is just basically dismantle as much as I, I can in the search for the location of the memory chips. Oh, hang on, could it be those? Could those be the firmware chipses? They could, you know, these would fit there, but I guess I really need to check on the internet first to see how much of this I should be dismantling but before I do no nope. hope to find that rattly thing it's disappeared forever I suspect it's one of these standoffs oh here it is one of those one of those drive standoffs okay let me have a quick look on the internet before uh, wasting your time and mine right apparently that is where they go how that's really super convenient for us so I'm gonna just shift the ST over here it's at a bit of a jaunty angle just so we can have a closer look and you remember I do use my camera a little bit like a microscope so apparently this is where the high chip goes and this is where the low so you notice it does say high and low on it so if you've got a, a sort of suitable pen that can mark things and I'm just about to get one because it is a good idea if you intend on keeping these to write on them high and low if you can just about see those I might actually just put on the motherboard here look high and low so now we know we can't mess this up we can't cock it up so I'm going to use tools that you're likely to have at home which is probably one of those little micro screwdriver things now kind of worryingly you see the chip is longer than the socket so I don't know if it's going to work right off sometimes these chips will have different sizes so if you imagine the I don't know, you, you might have a 128k chip or and the, the old chip might be a 64. So some of these are chip selects or address lines, so it doesn't matter, but we'll see. Normally though, whoa, there we go. So what I've done is I literally just put it underneath there and I'm trying to work it forward and uh, just keep applying pressure really. You don't really want it to bend though, you don't want it to sort of jerk back and then snap the pins off the uh, the last two. In fact, you do not want it to do that if you can help it you see those two there where they kicked off so to avoid that of course apply an even pressure but again getting a screwdriver like this in there it's going to be a problem now if you have them and they do have some somewhere you actually can get these things that go over the chips and sort of pull them up i don't have it to hand so i'm going to see if i can just i just need the back end to get out a little bit so just between the pins yeah got that one up a tiny bit come on now Come on, fella. Come on, little one. Just rocking it. Rock. Rocking it gently. Rocking it like a baby. Oh, there we go. And I've bent those back ones again. Oh, dearie me. Naughty me. Naughty me. Oh, well. 
put them aside. Right, fresh chips. Mm -mm -mm. So you see they come in this tube. The tube's designed to sort of keep them protected from static and also protected them from being trod on by your feet. So get rid of that. Open up the end. And remember, low on the bottom, high on the top. Avoid touching the pins, unlike me. I'm just checking underneath just to make sure inside the uh, PCB there there's no jumpers or anything like that that we might need to get to afterwards because if there was a jumper in there I'd probably go on the internet and see if there's likely to be something that I'm gonna to have to change so you can see that there are PCBs that people buy which have some sort of um, switches so they can switch between different versions and you can see how that could work it could work relatively easily you know boards that will go on here but because the floppy drive is immediately above them I suspect they always you know potentially suffer from the floppy drive hitting them or something like that so very low profile mod there mmm look at that look at that doesn't that look glamorous there pop our drive back in because we want to test it out we're ready to go already that was super quick okay it's super quick because I do have the case off but it's still pretty quick even if uh, if you had to do that yourself try and just position that drive stand off yeah it's rattling around just ignore it the floppy back in or in my case GoTech which is living where the floppy would normally live back on so before I pop the lid on though I'm just going to plug it in I think that's going to be sensible in there a bit of power Gonna, I'm just going to plug my mouse in as well because it's always a bit fun to be able to drive it when you can and I don't have to go underneath for mine, I can just plug it in right there. So let's take the camera with us. Let's see, we're going to be doing this together, you and me, you and I. Three, two, one, power on. The moment of truth. Black box of bombing! I'm bombing! I'm going to bomb you into next week! Seems like at least we've got something going on. Back to the internet. Okay, we figured it out. So I've had a look on the internet and basically it says there are jumpers right here. I'm going to try to zoom in. There you go. These jumpers here, they look like resistors but they're just zero ohm or whatever resistors, just short circuits is. And then there's this high density pad here which has some options, like an option ROM thing. So I've written down what my chips were, because I actually did this on a previous video, so I referred back to that. These are 27C010Us, which happen to be here. It's 27C010Us, that's the jumper settings for that. And also, just to show you, apparently if you short out E6, and you'll see E6 is here, that'll give you a high density disk option, and I'm going to be doing that too, because of course I'm using a GoTek which should support high density anyway, um, so I've got nothing to lose by trying that. But if you have a regular drive in there, it says you might hear a grinding noise, so be careful if you've got a regular drive. So it looks like I've got to change the settings here. So it's currently set to pins two and three on all of them um, which looks like this 28 pin 27C option and you remember the old chips were a bit shorter so we need to set it this 32 pin option so that means we need one and two two and three one and two on one W102 W103 and W104 I do do apologize for not holding that in frame how awful of me you can see them right there. Look, those are those three things. And I'm just going to point to them again with just this screwdriver. That looks like W104, that's W103, and that's W102. So these are effectively jumpers, and even though they look like resistors. So I'm going to use a bit, I think, of hot air so I can get at them from above. But if you want to, you can probably just um, cut the wires and put a blob of solder. So I'm just going to re-educate myself here with my phone. I'm going to do that bottom line. So that's W102 is pins 1 and 2, W103 is pins 2 and 3, and W104 are pins 1 and 2. 
Let's go for it, shall we? Let's start with the 102, as that's when we have to turn around. So that's this one right here, first one. Just getting my hot air, and I'm being very cautious. I should normally I'd put a bit of flux, but I didn't this time. There we go. So that whipped it straight out. So I've got to pop that back in on the other alternate pads there. Not too bad, eh? Not too shabby. Uh, W103 here stays the same. W104 gets reconfigured. So let's do that. Just going to turn that round. Again, hot air. Don't dawdle with the hot air. You don't want it to uh, mash up anything. Come on. Now I'm not totally absolutely convinced by that one just yet so I'm going to get my soldering iron out and that's fine because I actually want to make a solder bridge anyway across pins du, 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 E6 soldering iron is heating up so I'm just going to touch up just trying to get into there underneath on that W104 it's exciting isn't it all of this while I'm waiting for that, I'm just going to do our E6 jumper for HD. And I probably ought to, if you're going to do this, do this in stages. Don't bother with this solder jumper just yet. don't know if you saw that. <laughs> just basically you putting a blob across the two there. That's your solder jumper. And I'm just going to go in. This bottom of this resistor just looked a little bit dry. Now that I'm looking at it, I don't think it is actually dry. But uh, if I can, I'm just going to add a little teeny bit of solder to it. It's been a bit of a git. Yeah, there we go. That's it. That's good. <laughs> and I noticed on the camera you just saw a blur. Apologogies. Apologogies. So we're actually all still hooked up. I didn't unplug it this time. It's going to grab the camera off here. Bonk. On with the power. Right, power is on. <gasps> Atari logo, very good. This box, by the way, is just part of my SCART converter and it should just disappear. But look, ST RAM test. Didn't have that before, so this is definitely a different uh, operating system. Can't remember how long that message stays, though. Come on, bugger off. There we go. Nice. Mmm, checking all the RAMs. Check it! <gasps> 4096 KBs. That's plenty of KBs. Is. I did have a quick look, all four SIM slots are, are jam-packed on this one. Memory test complete. Not sure what this is for though, is that just uh, showing you something, indicating something? Is it a crash? No. Ah, it's loaded. <gasps> wow, and the desktop looks totally different already. I can tell it looks different because it's got a weird, the green isn't a solid green, it's actually a dithered. And you've got lots of options here. I was actually just trying to see how to change the uh, resolution. Uh, set preferences. Medium, please. Yes, sir. May I have another? Yeah, that looks totally different. So I'm pretty bloody pleased. Wowee. Look at that. Let's see if we can get some desktop info. That's, that's a bit odd, though. We're not getting the roving rainbow, but that may be because I'm in a higher resolution. Strange that they never just wrote the version though on there. Why, why was it so difficult for them just to write, you know, TOS 1.2 or whatever? I'm going to go back to the lower res just to see if it does the cycling rainbow in that res. Not that it's important. I mean, clearly this is the later version. It has more features, but I kind of, no, they've just done away with it. That's a shame. So there you go. Just to summarise, make sure I'm going to turn it off while I do this. Make sure you get in there with your memory and you uh, put it in the right place and if you want that hard high density option just put that jumper over there on the e2 hope that's been of some use to you as ever please like share subscribe click the bell icon in the corner if you want to be pings when i make a new video and as ever thanks for watching <laughs>